Okay, welcome to part two. Um, in this video, we're going to be getting on with our actual code. So um, I've covered all of the sort of folder stuff and SMS gateway sign up for the site type stuff in the previous part. So in this part, we're just going to get straight on with the code. So let's just go back to our folder and we'll start with coding the sort of form sort of logic stuff for our send.php file. So uh, let's go to our code, which we have here. Um, I should probably mention that I haven't removed quite all of the code from this. You can see that this send.php has one line at the top which is including the init file. And if we just look at the init file here, you can see that this is just doing what I always do, which is essentially it's including this SMS file, which may seem a little bit pointless because you may as well just have the send.php file include the SMS file, uh, backend file, but imagine you want to do more things in the init file and we're just following the same sort of pattern that we always use. So that's why we've done that here. Um, and obviously if you're using this in an actual site, you'll probably have a little bit of, you know, a few more of these include lines. So yeah. Anyway, so essentially this file is included in this file here. So yeah, anyway, that's that. Okay, so I'll just briefly explain this HTML here because it's a little bit more than I uh, usually start with. Um, essentially, this is all sort of um, down here. It's just the form. So you can see that we have the form tag here. Inside of that, there are three inputs. Um, this one at the top here is a text input, which is just for the person's name. And that's it. That's, um, you know, how I entered Bob in the previous video. That's who appears in the from field in the message. Uh, then we have this text area, which contains the actual message. And finally, we have just a submit button to send the form. Okay, so in processing this form, the first thing we need to do is up here, we need to check to see if the form has been submitted. And if it has, we're going to do some sort of error checking and then send the message. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is check to see if both of the form elements exist. So we'll check if is set post name and, oops, not for, post message, which are the two names of the form elements that we're going to be using. And if these are submitted, or if these have been submitted, we're going to define an uh, array which we're going to put all of our errors into. So we're going to set this equal to a new array and create a new variable, all that stuff. So we've created a new errors array here. And then down here, sort of here, we're going to do a few sort of error checks. And then further down, we're going to check to see if the errors array is empty, because for each of the error conditions, we're going to add an error, a string, and like a message, into that errors array and then we're going to use those further down to output the errors that have happened. So just here, we're going to check to see if the errors array is empty, because it starts empty, and if no errors occur, and no errors occur on the first here, um, the errors array will still be empty by the end, so here. So we can do that by just checking if empty errors, and if it is empty, we're going to do the sending message stuff, so send message. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is do our various error checks, and the only two we're going to do is the length, um, because the SMS system only allows for the name to be up to 11 characters and the message to be up to 160 characters. Um, now your phone has to obey these rules as well. Um, however, some of them have a sort of clever method of combining messages um, to allow you to write more stuff. Um, but the name always has to be less than 11 characters and quite often it just is your phone number um, but it can be you know, words as well you just have to be shorter than 11 characters okay so the two checks we're going to do is if string length strlen um, of the name so post name and if that is greater than 11 we're going to show an error and the error is going to be added to this errors array except we need the dollar symbol and what we're going to be adding is um, your name must be shorter than 11 characters. Then we're going to do a very similar check for the um, message, except the limit of that is 160 characters. So we're just going to do if string length post message is greater than 160 again add something to the errors array uh, your message must be shorter 
than 160 characters. Okay, and that'll just mean that we can't accidentally send invalid data to the API. Um, although it would, I think what it does is, e well, it either, does, it either rejects the message completely um, or it will just trim off the end. I'm not entirely sure which one of those it does. You can feel free to test it out for yourselves if you like. It's not something that I looked into. Anyway, uh, once we've determined that um, the messages, message and the name are a valid length, we need to actually send the message. So down here, we're going to call a function that we're going to define in a moment, which is going to be called um, send SMS without that plus symbol. And this function, we're going to define it to take three parameters. The first one being the phone number you want to send the message to. Um, and I'm not actually going to type in my real phone number here because that would be fairly silly. Um, so I'm going to use this placeholder variable called, um, I don't know, two, or my number, let's call it that. And then when we actually get to testing this, I'm going to define this somewhere that you can't see so that I don't accidentally show you my phone number because that would be quite bad. But anyway, um, so the second parameter we're going to have it um, uh, take is who the message is from. And this is just going to be post uh, name because that's what they type in. And the final parameter is going to be the message. Like so. So we're going to wrap up all of the sort of complicated HTTP and API stuff inside this single function, um, and then we're going to, well, be able to use it pretty much like the mail function. Okay. So once we've done that, we obviously need to um, have a way to display our success message and our errors. So that's what we're going to do down here, just above the form. What we're going to do here is check to see if the errors array has been defined, because if it has, that means that the form has been submitted. So we're going to check if is set errors, and if it is, we're also going to check to see if the errors array is empty. Because if it's empty, that means there have been no errors and the form has been successfully submitted. Otherwise, we're going to show the errors. So if it's empty, we're just going to output a simple success message. I'm going to put this inside a paragraph tag, and it's just going to say your message has been sent. And then down here, we're going to use a simple for each loop to loop over each of the errors. So for each errors as error. And then we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to output the uh, error message inside the p tag. So let's just do this and this. Uh, OK, there we go. And that should now work. Uh, we can't actually test this out because this function is not defined yet. But what we can do is just comment it out, and that will allow us to test our um, error checking and syntax without having to worry about accidentally calling a function that doesn't exist. So let's go back to our browser, and let's reload this page, and we get, I've spelled, is eat on line 5, so let's uh, just correct that to typo. Um, okay, that should be 2s1e, and reload our browser once more. Okay, that's worked. So let's just click send. Your message has been sent. Um, probably something you should check as well is to see if the form fields are empty. That's not something I thought about actually, but um, it would be fairly sensible to do that because you don't want people wasting all your credits by just clicking the send button over and over again. But anyway, let's just enter a name, so Bob and message. So click send, your message has been sent. And if we just enter something really long in this field, that should fail because that's longer than 11 characters, and it does. So it sees, uh, you can see that we have your name must be shorter than 11 characters. However, there is a slight problem here uh, because obviously people are going to want to correct this without having to retype their entire message. So what we can do is have PHP output the values back into these fields if they are there, so if the form has been submitted. So let's go back to our page and let's just quickly change that. So if we just scroll down to our inputs, what we can do is add a value attribute, and then this is going to contain some PHP stuff. Oops. So we're going to check to see if the form, this form field, has been submitted. So if is set post name, we're going to output post name. And because people might accidentally type some HTML in here, we need to use HTML entities on this value like so, which I've most likely spelled wrong, because I spell it wrong 
every single time that looks right um, and that should then output the name back to the name input if they've entered it let's just reload this again let's resend our data and that didn't work why didn't that work that should have worked I think okay so let's look at oh, I didn't save it pro okay so let's go back to our browser and reload the page again and now you can see that we have the name back here so we can correct this by just shortening it and hit send and it will be sent so what we also need to do is the same thing for the message field so what I'm going to do is just copy this PHP line here like so and then we're going to paste that inside of our text area tags and we're going to change name to message which is the name of this field okay so that's that done and we can just very quickly test this by typing something in here and click send and that still stays in that form as well so that's worked okay so that's it for this part and in the next part what we're going to do is code our send SMS function which is sort of the core of this video or this series um, tutorial and that will actually send the message to the phone okay so that's it and thank you for watching and come back for part three I think